All right, here again, Corsa Motors. Shavam's car down for the season now. When I say down for the season, it was normally up there on the lift. Now it's down on the ground so we can drive it. Supra uh, ran out of gas because we've been pulling in and out, but now it is fueled up, ready to go. And today we're gonna look at this over here. This is the uncovering a Ferrari 360, because I think this provides an interesting perspective it's almost got like the uh, the Chrysler, let's just say the uh, Chrysler Sebring body lines right now without the convertible hoops. But it'll give you a little insight as to what's going on back here and where everything is because this is pretty much as naked as this car gets. You can see all the computers and electronics down here under the seat. And normally I would put a set of golf clubs or something back here. You can see this is an access window. Uh, this is on both the coupe and the convertible. And that access window allows you to do the timing belts, which is on this side of the engine without taking the entire engine out. But when you take the car apart to this point, obviously removing the engine is not a big deal. Uh, if you ever have like the windows open or get water in the car, it's not uncommon for these computers that are on the floor to uh, get water and go bad. These are pretty common as far as things that go bad. These are the um, fuel sender units. And when you see the top, and I don't know where they have the top, the top cradle sits here, but there's inspection ports here because it is a common enough problem that uh, there's an inspection ports so you can see into this. And then you just remove the entire top cradle to access the fuel pumps. And these are the fuel tanks. And uh, I'll never forget, I had a fuel tank on a 360 once that raisined itself, which the pressure was so strong, it inverted itself into a, a mess. Um, this brace here is obviously up. It's not where it's not where it's uh, in its fully mounted position. That's why there's a piece of wood here holding it. But you'll see how replaceable virtually everything on this car is. Uh, so if there is an impact, a lot of it, the car can be just as good as new with certain things just bolted in or bolted on. Um, the Let's see what else we have as far as interesting stuff. It, it just, it's cool to see the car in this condition right now because I, it, it explains exactly why you shouldn't work on your own car. And I talked about Ricky putting oil in this car. It's not the biggest deal. But the guy that says like, oh yeah, cool. I'll just work on my own Ferrari. This is the last thing that I want to do. Like this, this is not something that I wish upon anybody. This is a lot of work. This is a big job. And this is for a transmission swap because this transmission somehow got water in the casing and that just completely jacked up the transmission. This is the F1 shifter. This F1 system, when I swap over to a manual, this all comes out. And this is a very expensive piece, believe it or not. But the transmission would sit here, go right into the clutch. Uh, this is the transmission mount that tends to go bad from time to time. It's a fairly common thing. The engine mounts obviously are underneath the engine. But it's a very, very simple design. Well, when I say simple design, there's a lot going on. But it's a simple design in that engine transmission and then everything else is strapped to it. The front of the car doesn't have a lot going on. Just a little bit of cooling and a trunk. And, like, you'll, you'll like, start to miss this, but these trunks are very generous and like when you look at the Huracan Spider now you have like virtually no oh, this is the push down one see hold on let me push down let me put you between my legs push down pull up I mean you could fit a lot of stuff in here this is definitely like a full-size Lambo tire you can go right in this trunk I, and I, I when I travel with my wife uh, we've got the weekend bags, we've got two weekend bags, we've got a backpack, uh, we can get the golf clubs in the car. So it is a pretty functional car. It's just certain things and certain uh, repairs that have to be done that make it slightly cost prohibitive. Uh, I can't imagine this job is going to be cheap. As James just told me, this, the only reason this came off, there's two things happening in this car right now. It's a transmission replacement and then the uh, fuel pump replacements. And the, the transmission is the reason that this came off. So the, the top thing came off for the fuel pumps, but the only way to access this is also to take the top cover off. And without lifting this, the transmission won't come out of the car. 
So talk about a major service. Um, th this, I don't know, this looks pretty labor intensive, not something that I would sign up for. And I'm glad I've never needed the service of this caliber on my th Ferrari 360s. But uh, you know what? Sometimes it happens. And this is what I tell people. I, like, this is not a, a service you should expect frequently. This is a transmission swap, probably. I wouldn't suggest putting it in, uh, rebuilding these transmissions. You can get them from fur parts or exotic auto recycling uh, fairly cheap. And now if you buy a car through the dealership, you can even get extended warranties on 360s. Uh, and everything through a, a company called For Sure, which does um, like like legit warranties on cars like this. So if if your main fear in getting into a car like this is turning it into a Sebring convertible for a, a crazy service, then scoop yourself up a warranty. Me, I've got several years and several 360s, and nothing like this. So it's not uh, it's not entirely something that you should bank on or expect. And I was just talking to somebody about the IMS pilot bearing. He's looking to buy a uh, Porsche, a 997. He's like, well, the, uh, the pilot bearing, the IMS, it's not a common problem. It's common enough that people talk about it, but so is AIDS. And you don't walk around thinking you're going to get AIDS every day. So why do you think that your car is going to be the car to have that failure? You can use it as a negoti negotiating point. But I said, what's, what's the worst thing that happens? Like, if you spend $5,000 now to do a service to prevent that, What's the, the downside? What if you don't do that service? Well, then I may have to replace the motors, 30 grand. No, it's not. Well, yeah, they'll rebuild the motors, five. I'm like, so you're spending five to prevent maybe having to spend five if you're one of the unlucky three, two, one percent of people that have had that failure on your car. I'm like, you're better off just letting the damn thing fail and saving your money because, like, look, shit happens. It's, it's part of owning anything. You can have something that goes bad, but it's not something you should expect to happen. And obviously, the, the caliber of vehicle you buy will dictate, uh, in some instances, whether it's likely to happen or not. But, yeah, I don't envy this guy. Uh, it just, this, to me, was a good opportunity to show you a 360 sort of stripped down to really as much as you can strip it down. I mean, this is, this is not a common sight. I mean, I guess it is uh, in the service in the service arena, but it's not a common sight to see a Ferrari completely roof lineless. So, again, if you want to see what breaks and when it breaks and how it breaks, I'll bring it to you. If you guys find these interesting, great. I, I'm a guy that finds the how stuff works, and I'm intrigued by things that are taken apart, and that's why I make these videos. So, I hope you enjoyed. See you tomorrow. For those of you not familiar with my other company, I started a company called Adventure Drives, which combines driving and bucket list travel. It's a lot of fun. Our next trip, we're off to Europe in July. If you're interested, prices can be done per person. It's don't worry. If you don't have somebody to go with you, we can match you up with somebody. You can check the link in the description for adventuredrives.com and sign up today.